democracy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like here that he actually uh, defines here the blue collar labor. I again will reiterate my frustration with people who use the term worker because I think everybody's working. Whether you're somebody who just wakes up every morning, puts on makeup, and turns on a camera and you open your OnlyFans and then you dance and answer requests by people and you post images. That's the work. That's as much work as somebody who's a literal grave digger going out there and digging graves or somebody who's a garbage man. That, those are all different forms of work. And we've now used technology, time-saving devices to find many different ways of work because without some of these technologies, we would all just be involved in farming and obtaining just basic resources to just handle the whole idea of being alive. So that's something that I will reiterate every first time it comes up in every conversation. And that's the first time. And for most people, this is why I'm saying most people are not who talk about these woke things haven't actually read Marcuse. Because like here you can see he's pointing out that he's saying this new working class and he puts it in quotation marks. And he's saying this is different from the general definition of working class because before there was technology, there was a rather split in what work was versus the people who were literally the it was like everyone was a worker <laughs> it was like 95 percent of us 90 99 percent of us were workers and then there was a royal class that literally did not work like mm -hmm. now i guess there's something you can think about like i think the royal family being in the british royal family is work and that's why i think when the when harry and megan decided to leave there's a certain salary and that they're given because you have to actually perform you actually have to know certain things you have to know the way to behave in certain places show up at certain locations make certain speeches do certain charitable things. So there's actually even work in that sense. But it was a different sense where people were like, okay, this is more performing, this is more action. That was a different kind of class of it. But here, pointing this out, because it's something that came up with the ship that was stuck, the Evergreen, that was uh, ever given, that was stuck in the Suez Canal. On, no, it was, yeah, the Suez Canal. It was stuck in there. And then there was that meme or that, that little digger digging town that someone's like, oh, look at these people talking about minimum wage shouldn't be a thing. Now the entire global market is relying on this unskilled labor. And somebody was like, ha, ha who's this person thinking somebody who can actually handle a digger is unskilled labor? Like here you see he's talking about, he's saying new working class. It's still the people who are in the different parts of the working class are just because it's right now most people think service industry isn't necessarily, they, they think there's a difference between white collar, like white collar is not workers. And then everybody who's in blue collar and service industry is working class. But that's that's not accurate. That's not an accurate way to actually divide these things where there are some people who are very skilled. They try to interchangeably use the term skilled and unskilled labor to blue collar and, and uh, white collar. And then they say, like, if you're in white collar, you're not a worker in that kind of sense. And I, I, I don't I don't I don't. Well, well so the. Um... The neo-Marxists, the challenges they had is they talked about what was called a post-industrial society. Because you think about during Marx's time, he wrote ah, maybe like 1840s. Well, because in 1840s, think about it. What did you do? You were a farmer, a laborer. You were a wealthy business person. Then maybe you had academics, police, few people like that. So he didn't foresee all these white-collar jobs. Like It's funny. I, I looked up. There was a um, – when I worked at the retirement home, there was actually a couple that lived there. They were the longest married couple in Dutchess County. She died first, then he died a little while later. Uh, they were married 79 years, and wow. it's crazy. Yeah, well, The world record's 82, but I was reading his obituary, and it said he worked for IBM in the typewriter division. It's just funny <laughs> to think of that now because I'm like, oh, wow, they actually had a whole division of people that just did this. But I would imagine during Marcuse's time – because uh, I think that was in the 40s. So th like that was kind of between then and now where like I think Marcuse's time, he died in 79. So computers were coming around, but they were in the very early stages. So you had these big mainframes and things like that. There were no computer divisions yet, but they were heading more in that direction. And, and I think that's where they were kind of saw like, wait a minute, where do we go from here? Because it's like it's not everything gets automated. Everyone's out of work and then it's just dirt poor and ultra rich. It's no, you have people that actually make good salaries but doing working from a computer or typewriter or whatever at that time and that's kind of like marx in predictus where do we go from here and of course again being good marxists they're not going to re-examine the theory and everything they're just going to double down or find some way to squeeze it in okay so maybe post-industrial is kind of a situation where we can say we're like a post-farming farming uh civilization where it's not that we don't need farming as much as we did in the past it's this Farming isn't the primary, one of the primary things, majority yeah. of humans that, that takes up majority of our time. So I, I, in that sense, I would kind of agree that at least the West is kind of post-industrial in the sense where 
there's still the industry the industries are much more productive and civilization relies on the results of industry much more than they did in the past during the industrial age but at the same point it's taking far fewer percentage of human work in order to keep those industries going and that's part of as uh, alex epstein says we live in a machine labor um a machine labor civilization where machines and and having abundant reliable energy is part is part of the reason that we don't have to spend so much time in the actual industries dealing with some of these things. So I think I think that's that's kind of it. When when we eventually get to human action, we'll talk about it. But uh, but um, you know, Tom Woods brings up the example of his father working a forklift. It used to be you had to pay a few guys to lift heavy pallets. Then it's okay, you can pay a guy with a forklift a bit more money, and he just does it all himself. But the machine makes him more productive, so he can get a higher salary for moving the same amount of stuff. Yeah. The, I think the Marxists don't factor in things like that. They have a very skewed idea of how that works. Yeah, because this this whole idea of technocracy, that's one thing I would, I would like to understand. What, what would he mean by that? Would he think now we're technocratic because we use computers to make calculations about things that make us this exponentially more productive than we were in the 70s? One person themselves, just by having a computer that can calculate and say, instead of sending this one individual here, send 10 individuals to these other places, and then you'll have 100, 100%, or you'd have 100 times the actual results from sending that one person to that first location. That kind of thing, I, he would consider that to be a technocracy, but I don't understand what what he would think would be negative about that and what world that he wants like after that kind of situation. It's I, I, I don't see it. Well, I think it's something Foucault criticized as well, and Foucault was actually somewhat right. Like, in a way, like the idea that the people in power decide what science is acceptable and use it accordingly. So that's sort of been the criticisms of people like Fauci and other people where it's like, oh, these are the experts who decide we have to stay locked down forever, but they're the scientists, trust them. But then it beco it comes down to, is this actual science by some objective measure or is it the people in charge just deciding if any science, what they want to use? So there is something valid to that. But again, I don't know enough about Marcuse to know exactly what he meant in this context. Um, All right. Thank you for listening. This has been a clip from an actual longer recording that I'll try to leave a link to on the screen or somewhere around here where you're listening to this. Peasants. 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 Okay. Okay.